Well, good morning, everyone. We'll bring this KDA meeting to order. Uh, first item is uh, stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item is to approve the agenda. We've got a motion by Schoblum to approve the agenda. I'll second the motion. Second by Scoy. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Approve the July 28th, 22 meeting minutes. Also moved, Mr. Chair. Motion by Commissioner Schoblum. Second by Scoy. Second by Commissioner Scoy. Any discussion? We had, we had an interesting uh, acting KDA chair there. <laughs> when you were gone. Yeah, uh-huh. Glad to hear it. It was interesting. We made it somehow. Yeah. All right. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. New business. Uh, consi consider the sale of land within the North Home Industrial Site to Minnesota Department of Transportation. <clears throat> yep. So this would be. Um, Consider the sale subject uh, to be contingent on uh, MnDOT adding uh, some required covenant language that's contained in Minnesota statute. But this would be uh, authorizing the sale for the uh, for the price uh, contained in the appraisal that we covered in the public hearing. Uh, would be authorizing the signatures and then contingent on again uh, MnDOT adding certain some certain language. Into the into the deed, and then final review by the county attorney. You're recommending then, David? Recommending. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll move, move then, Mr. Chair. I've I'll got sign. a. I've got a motion by Commissioner Pavlik. I'll second the motion. And a second by Commissioner Scoy to approve. Um, discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is carried. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there any any public comment? Move to adjourn, Mr. Any any public comment uh, on the screen? Okay. Um, motion to adjourn. Uh, by Pavlik. Second. Second by Commissioner Schoblum. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, the KDA meeting is adjourned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll call this uh, meeting to order of the county board. Yeah. First item of business, approve the agenda. Additions, yeah, right. I'll move, Mr. Chair. We've got a motion. Second. A second uh, to approve the agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call a question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The minutes from August 9th, regular meeting. Move the minutes, Mr. Chair. Okay, we've got a motion, Jason? Yes. Second. And we've got a second. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, we'll call a question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Financial business, courthouse claims. Highway claims, health and human service claims. A lot of claims there. Mr. Chair, I will move on. Courthouse claims, highway claims, uh, public health and human service claims, and uh, one burial. All right. We've got a motion by Commissioner Eady. I'll second that. Second by Commissioner Schoble. Any discussion on that? If not, we'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I know it's uh, the warrant void. You didn't. Nope, but I'll move on that now. All right, we've got a motion to approve the warrant void. 
second. Second, second. I think Jason. I think was first or yeah. Wayne. Okay. All right. Second by Commissioner Scoy. Any uh, questions or discussion on that? If not, we'll call a question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries unanimously. On to human resource business, the employment uh, promotion of E911 correction officer from yes. part to full time. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I do have an employment promotion of Kane Koscik. He's moving from part time uh, to full time. What's his uh, name? Kane Koscik. Kane. Yes. What if that was going to be one of the boys that I know all the Koscik? Um, yes, so Mike Koscik, our, our oh, chief okay. of police, it would be his son. Oh, neat. Yes, yeah, yes. that's neat. Following in his dad's footsteps, too. <laughs> Um, so yes, we are promoting him up to full time, uh, and his effective start date was on the 15th of this month. Okay, so that's okay. It, that we don't need a motion. It, it is because it's a promotion from part time to full time, okay. so I, it's not a notice of hire. Um, so yes, I do believe it does require a motion. Oh, okay. Yes. So wish for the board. Move the motion. Commissioner Shoblum. Second. Commissioner Eighty. With the second. Any questions or discussion? If not, we'll call a question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Approve and execute non-union salary, salary oh. and benefits. It should be the salary group. Yep. Okay. We already did the non-union hourly group. Um, so yes, this is going with the other um, proposals that I've been bringing to the board. So approving the 2022 through 2024 wage and benefit settlement for the salary employee group. Um, with the it would be also getting authorization for the administration director to make the necessary um, budget adjustments and fund transfers as well. So it's implementing the PACE wage schedule. Um, any employee that completes 10 years of full-time employment during the three-year um, contract term, one additional step will be awarded um, at time of placement for any employee who completes 20 years of full-time employment during the three-year contract term. Uh, one additional step will be awarded at the employee's anniversary date. 2% uh, COLA was applied in 2022, and that's being retro to January 1st of this year. Uh, in 2023, there will be a 2.5% COLA applied, and in 2024, another 2.5% COLA. Um, it's a three-year term, so January 1 of this year through December 31st of 2024. And we're maintaining the county dollar amount cap contributions for health insurance in 2022. But like the other groups, effective January 1 of next year, um, we'll be moving to a percentage contribution. So for that uh, common family plan, that will be a 90% county contribution, 10% employee. Um, and then for the HSA compatible plans, it'll be a 95% contribution and a 5% by the employee. Um, and so again, that's effective for the 1st of 2023. And then also um, providing one additional floater. And I attached the um, wage scale and the memo that I sent out. So if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer those. Any questions, comments? To me, it's extremely frustrating. It's it's hard to you you need you need someone to literally follow up on this. It's unbelievable. I miss the old days when everything was just. Mm -hmm. wage. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at. Mm -hmm. Anyway, well, wish, you, you need a motion then, right? I do need a motion, yes, please. Is anyone willing? Uh, I would move on. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. All second. Okay, and a second by Commissioner Scoy. Any uh, discussion or questions? Put a lot of work into it, though. I can give you credit. Yes, it was. I sat in a bunch of it. <laughs> it was a lot of Still work. Still I'm glad uh, that we were pretty well done taking care of. We just have one more to go. Yeah. So. So anyway, uh, any any further comments, questions? Hearing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed. Motion carries. And I know in four more months, I won't have to worry about. That. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's next? And separation. Yes, I have. Um, approving the employment separation of our environmental service specialist, Steve Blair. He has officially put in his notice for a retire, um, and his effective date will be September 12th. So we'll also need authorization to fill the vacant position within that assigned wage scale. Um, 
board chair, I also have our retirement gift policy, so I'm also seeking authorization for you to sign off on this um, policy. I wish Steve was here because when he, Nolan Baritano, we had just hired at that time uh, to be the environmental service director. He did a great job the years he was here. And he called Carol Lamb and said, you know, who the applicants were. And he said, what, what do you think of this Steve Blair? So then I said, yeah, he'll, he'd do a good job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he did. Yep, so. he's been great and we'll all very happy for him, but he'll be missed around here. Yeah. Awesome. He'll go to Big Falls. He's got this place down there. Oh, he does. Okay, yeah, okay. Up. Okay, so uh, we would need approval then by the board. Correct. I'll move. We've got a motion by Commissioner Eighty. Second. And a second by Commissioner Scoy. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those motion carries unanimously. Or chair, I'll get your signature when I'm done with my next one here. Okay. Okay. Employment transfer. Yes, so this is um, a, a newer one, but um, with our payroll and benefit coordinator resigning and she took a position elsewhere, I had um, took it upon myself to apply for the position and so I was awarded it. So this is getting approval for the transfer of myself from the full-time human resource generalist position to the full-time payroll and benefit coordinator. Um, obviously, I will continue to perform the HR uh, responsibilities until a replacement is found, and my official start date in the payroll and benefit coordinator position will be determined once that HR person is um, that HR position is replaced. And she's taking it. You're taking a cut in pay. I'm taking a cut in pay. Yeah, yes. very unusual, but yeah. I am taking a cut in pay. But um, I really am looking forward to this position, and I really want to be able to continue to serve our wonderful employees um, with their payroll and benefit needs and I really want to carry on the great work that Emily did for us while she was here too. So I'm really excited for this opportunity and looking forward to starting and um, with that we'll also need to go ahead and fill the full-time human resource generalist position within that assigned wage scale as well. Would you like a motion on that? I will need a motion, yes. Yeah. We've got a motion. Second, and a second. Any uh, questions, discussion? All right, hearing none, we'll call the question then. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank Anything you very else? much. All right. All right. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to bother you for a signature quick. We'll move on then to uh, Rain Lake property owners' request for a letter of support. Who's, who's representing us there? So I, I guess it'd be up to the board then. Which is the board? I would certainly motion to support. Okay, thank you very, very well, very well written. I agree as well. Yeah. Well, second, Mr. Chair. Okay, we've got a motion, motion by Jason, a second by Kevin. Yeah, they have worked very hard on this. I can't give them credit. They're a great group of people. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, We'll call the question then. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Approval. Let's see. If I may, Commissioner? Yeah, go ahead. So this is, we, we need to reschedule the meetings that we have scheduled for November. We actually had one scheduled for November 8th, which of course is general election, and by statute you can't have a board meeting on the day when it's general election. So I'm just asking if we can move from November 8th to November 15th county board meeting, and then we would move the one from on the 22nd down to the 29th. This has to be something new because all the years I've been here, we had we were we have board meetings on election day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Well, it certainly is statute. Public that. meetings are prohibited on election day. What day is the general election? November 8th. Why in some places am I seeing November 1st? Because I've, I've, al know. I've always gone by the rule that election day is the first Tuesday after the first Monday. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's the first, which is a Tuesday, it can't be. Well, as I know, is all the years I've been here, we always, on Tuesday, election day, we always had a board meeting. Well, because we had them every Tuesday. Right. Well, that's true. We met every Tuesday, but yeah. 
Yeah. So that's kind of, I mean, I, either that's new or it's kind of weird. But. Yeah, maybe we were just breaking the rules. Yeah, maybe, maybe we were just breaking the rules. Maybe we're going to prison for all right. of them. <laughs> <laughs> so that, if that's all right for Wade, I mean, I don't know if the rest of the board's okay. It's up to you, gentlemen. 15 and... Well, I mean, I don't have any problem with moving, especially as a staff is not And there's probably some people not in season with that. Effect. So, are you looking for a motion on that? Yes, we need approval to, okay. to make the change. Okay. I'll move on that. We've got a motion. Motion. I'll, I'll second. Make I'll second. And a second by. Here's the sheriff. We got to behave now. No, no. We got it. We, uh, we second by Kevin. Yep. Yes. All right. Any uh, discussion or questions? Hearing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously in CVB update. Welcome. Hi. This is Delaney, everybody. Yes. Hi. Hi. So I'm just here to get We're a little... We're not as bad as you heard. So. Yeah, oh, good. Well, because I heard some pretty rough things. Pretty rough. <laughs> so I'm Delaney Rochelle. I'm the executive director for the CBB. I took the position over in January of this year. Um, so I'm just who, here who to give... Who was your predecessor? Uh... Um, so it was Pete Schultz. Yeah. He was there for, gosh, I think like time. 18 years yep. or something. Yep. So... How's he doing? I mean, is he enjoying himself? He or? is loving retirement. Okay. Yep, he comes in every once in a while to use the Wi-Fi, but That's you know, it's always good to see him. Yeah, so, I enjoy him. Yeah, he's a nice guy. He trained me for like six weeks, okay. so it was fun to spend time with him. He's so knowledgeable yep. about everything in the county. So, <laughs> so I'm not as knowledgeable as him, so if you have some questions, I might not know the answers. But I'm just here to give a little update on what we've been up to. Um, and then Jason sits on my board as well. So, so we are, our board is made up of 11 people from around the community. Um, we collect the 3% lodging tax and then we use that 3% of the tax we collect to market the area outside of the area. Um, so right now we're made up of five brand name hotels, 11 independently owned hotels. Um, we have two houseboat operations and then nine plus VRBOs, um, vacation rental by owners. Um, so we do have the two new hotels that just opened up the Cobblestone and the new American by Wyndham. We were there yesterday, girl. At the new American? No, the at the Cobblestone. We had a, yeah, Kuchiching Economic Development Authority meeting in, in their Oh, okay. They have a beautiful room. Yeah, there. it's a beautiful hotel. And they're opening up their restaurant and bar. Yep. On Friday, I think they said. Yeah, yeah, yep. So that's exciting. I spoke with both those general managers, and they've been a full almost every weekend since they've opened. And both of them are booked full, of course, for the shutdown and with the bass tournament. So they're booked full through August, which is amazing since they just opened a few weeks ago. Well, it, you know, I got to tell you guys this, I mean, that's just showing how old I am. The last time we had a new hotel built in International Falls was a Holiday Inn in the 60s. And then all of a sudden now, here we are all these years later, two new hotels. But they did their research on, you know, the, the travel to Canada and all those things and felt that they could make it, and, you know, thank goodness. Right, yeah, we've had um, great feedback. I've worked with the owners of the American a lot and they're just so happy to be a part of the community and they've had great feedback here so yeah. they're really enjoying being part of the community well, here. Hopefully they're, I, I know they'll be successful. Because, yeah, 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 absolutely. So um, then let's see, on the next page here, this one, I know I sent over a little handout. I just have that we are spending 67% of this year's budget on marketing, um, which is an increase from in the past. Um, we're kind of, kind of shifting from where Pete did a lot of print ads and I'm going more digital with our ads. Um, and we seem to be getting great feedback from that. Because you're with the younger generation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We need that. <laughs> yeah, so we've been getting a lot of great feedback. Um, our information requests are up from in the past, which is great. Um, our website visits, all our social media platforms, all of those are increasing views and likes and follows. So that's just good for the community. Um, we do have 
two big projects right now going on. One was our new vacation planner. Um, so we printed 15,000 copies of those um, in, and then that was a big $17,000 project that we had. And then we're also doing, right now we have um, a segment with Midwest Outdoors happening. So that's a outdoor show. They're on the outdoor channels. They're going to do, they were just up the first week in August doing segments out on the lake fishing. Um, and then they're coming up in October again. They're gonna go on a guided grouse hunt with Tony Snyder who's going to take them on a guided hunt in the woods there. So we're doing that. Um, and then also, apart from doing just the outdoors thing, they're going to showcase our downtown area as well and show that my goal is to make International Falls Brainy Lake not just a fishing destination, you know, like you can bring your family here and you don't even have to go out on the lake and you can still have a great vacation when you come here. So, so that's okay. kind of what we're up to. And then just, like I said, we have um, a big social media campaign going on with Spectrum, which the news or the TV operation there. We're geofencing on Google, which means we are targeting certain people on Google in their searches, which I've seen a big increase in our information requests coming off of that. So, so, so you were, you're representing just the International Falls area. So I do International Falls, Rainier, and Rainy Lake. Okay. So, like that would be Shea Shea, Island View, Camp Idlewood. I mean, just in my own mind, I I would like to see it countywide because we've got we've got Little Fork and North Home and, right. and so much to offer and they don't get any representation. Right, absolutely. Yep. So that would be that's another, you know, in the future something I would like to see it expand. You know, I was even talking to the owners of Boondocks out mm -hmm. there and they now have their R V sites, which we don't currently we don't collect lodging tax from um, R V sites. But you know I think uh, Rainy Lake RV has made a donation to us in the past and we do feature them um, like in our vacation planner and I do do stuff for them online as well just because they do donate to us. But I would like to you know, hopefully one day get lodging tax from RV parks. They were flooded for a while there, right? They were very yeah. badly. I did, uh, last night when we were at Thunderbird Carol, they, were, they stopped and talked to me. They were. I just happened to run into them. So yeah, they're now back. they're they're back open. Yeah. Yep, I stopped out there the other day, so. But it was costly for them. I mean, they lost yeah. a lot of revenues. Yeah, yeah, they did lose a lot. But anyway, I think it'd be great if we could expand expand it into the county. Yeah. A, big, a big falls. Speaking of RVs, I mean, the, the extension they did at their RV park, it, it, it's been booming. You know? Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that's one thing, um, I guess I don't know all the steps I would have to take to get the RV parks to submit lodging tax to us. Well, something to think of, you know, so, we're the county board, so yes, right. we, we tend to think in that area. Yeah, because I was, I was talking to um, Desiree out at Boondocks and she was like, I would love to be able to be in your vacation planner on your map, yep. you know, a lot of stuff like that. Cause sometimes I send people when they've done a lot of activities in the area, I'll be like, oh, you should go out to Boondocks. They have bingo, you know, it's something to do, um, which is fine. I have no problem promoting other air businesses that don't give us lodging tax, but it'd be nice to be able to have them in our book, have them on our map, stuff like that, so. Well, you'll have a new county board next year to deal with. <laughs> Jason will be the only uh, reminder. Right. By, by the way, well, looks well, so great. <laughs> <laughs> Unless my demise is that eminent. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we, we, Wayne will be there. Sense of sensibility. All right. So, yeah, so that's my little update. Do you guys have any questions for me that I didn't answer? No? Nope. You're doing a great job. All righty. Job. All right. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for you. You're welcome anytime. All right. Well, thank you. If you can put up with us. <laughs> okay. Who's next? Sheriff's business. Oh. That's you. Short and sweet. Good. Uh, just have two contracts uh, for board approval. One is with Cuching County Public Health and Human Services. That is to provide nursing services to the jail. And the second one is uh, Rainy Lake Medical Center to provide uh, the health authority services toward the jail. With these two contracts in place, we believe we meet the Department of Corrections 
standards. I've emailed them. I haven't heard back from them yet, but um, after this meeting, after we get this contract signed, I'll email them again and say the contracts are now in place. Next steps. Because uh, that was their indication to us that was the only thing that was holding us back from operating as a class two was the jail medical services. Um, and both these contracts will be um, effective immediately as soon as they're signed. Um, the contract with Public Health and Human Services, it's uh, reimbursed at the, uh, the current hourly rate of the nurse, whatever the nurse has made. So um, they'll just bill us for however many hours that the jail nurse, that they're over uh, that week. You know, I think we're quarterly billing we had agreed upon. Either that or monthly. Yeah. I'm not sure we have that cemented yet. But yeah. It'll yeah. just be the hourly rate. And then the, uh, with Rainy Lake Medical Center, it's $8,000 per year. Huge savings. Huge savings from yeah. what? What a great partner. What was proposed. Yeah, so, yeah, we're, we, we appreciate the, uh, the hospital and Rob Pastor for stepping up and agreeing to work with us um, as we attempt to. <laughs> get back on track and it's really important as we move forward with our new building you know yeah. that we have all these services in place and you know hopefully that's just the starting point for this and we're going to look to improve upon you know the medical services that we provide our inmates where we have to provide them so we're going to do the very best we can I haven't heard from kent but remember we were, we were kind of in a hurry there to try to get stuff before these interest rates go up yeah i haven't I, uh, have you heard from him? I haven't, no, not on the, uh, it's been a couple weeks on the jail stuff. But. Okay. Well, hopefully we can get together with him sooner rather than later and keep the, I know, I know he was a big point on it, you know, the, uh, what, what do you call it, the Fed is going to mm -hmm. keep increasing yeah. Yeah. in that yeah. cost rate. We're, I mean, we're tied, just so you, you know, for the public, a lot of people don't even know what we're doing here. We're, we're still uh, limited on our jail. Capacities, mm -hmm. so which is costing the county a lot of money because we have to transport the prisoners. But even even beyond that, we're looking at uh, the figure that we keep hearing, and we don't know for sure yet, is twenty million dollars to put a new jail in place for Kuchin County. Yeah, jail slash remodeled spaces. I mean, it with a projected cost of up you know up to 20 million who knows what the final price is going to be but it's uh and when i you know when i graduated we had 18,000 people in this county we're down to yeah. 11 7 in the last just to give you an idea i mean there's less people to pay for all these things and yeah. so as we look to the future but we have no choice i mean i, I was i was not all for it until we sat down and we have no choice yeah. i mean yeah, I mean, you know, statutorily, we have to provide certain services. And <laughs> one of them is that either you have to have a jail or you have to find a, another county that was willing to house your inmates and it's going to cost you money. So it's just, it's a cost the county has to. And just for the board, I mean, because I, 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 I haven't really been keeping them informed because we haven't made final decisions. But uh, International Falls says, yep, you know, they're going to, if they're going to, they're part of this or not, we're going to have to do that pretty soon and get a. And the other thing is, uh, uh, Lake of the Woods County, they can't afford a jail, and so they're, they're possibly going to look to yeah. us for probably five, five cells. Yeah. So, so that's uh, just, just an update to where we're at. On that's this. all on the table, yeah. So, so once we get uh, this designation on uh, these services, uh, we'll, we'll go back to them. That is my understanding from all my previous communi written communication. I made sure to capture it in emails and letters from the DOC that this was the only reason we had to voluntarily go down to class one is we didn't have a designated health authority and we didn't have the nursing services in jail. With these two contracts, we have the designated health and services and the uh, nursing services for the jail. So that's been my understanding all along. I've had a lot of communication with them so that I had emailed them saying, hey, these are in place. What's the next steps? I don't know if there's a formal process or if it's just a matter of us notifying them. You'll send these contracts to Yep. Um, Sheriff Elliott would have handled it quite differently. He yeah. just, he'd have said, get the hell out of my jail. Yeah. <laughs> and then they would have... And then they would have <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's the thing. I mean, it, to, have a, to have a facility licensed by the Department of Corrections, you have to follow the rules as provided in 2911. And if you fail to do so, 
they don't license you. Now, at that point, then the county has all the liability if you try to, you know, house inmates in a non-licensed facility. And it, they, we got, they got their thumb on us, that's for sure. Yeah, and I mean, you know, the DOC, the DOC it's, it's been minor frustrating. I mean, especially when we're in the middle of the greatest natural disaster we've had in recent history, right? So to throw this on top, it's been very frustrating, but... Uh, and, and John very expensive. And, and expensive, but John and Curie have uh, worked hard and long hours just to facilitate moving inmates around the entire state like we're doing right now and bringing them back for court. It's been difficult, but I can't say enough about how hard they've worked on this. So that's why these two pieces are important. And then it's, it's my understanding uh, that once these are in place, we can then begin back at that 90 day operation so then at 90 days we're housing people out not at 72 hours no. and then just to, so then uh in these two i there it's budgeted in my current budget so i don't expect it to have an impact on the on my bottom line at least for this year nurk nurk's going to come up too yet at this at the end of the summer, mm -hmm. summer here so from that's that's where we we put a lot of people down there in the room. So yeah, I think I'm looking. I'm looking for a motion from the board to approve the two contracts: one with Public Health and Human Services, one with Rainy Lake Medical Center. And then off, I uh, I'll need the board chair signature, and I guess just authorize me to sign it for the county. And the, both of these contracts were sent to the county attorney. He reviewed and approved them. Commissioner Eden. Um, I th I think I think I heard you uh, answer my question. Um, we're on a 72 hour hold right yeah okay I've, I've been gone for a while so yeah um it's that, good to see you back yeah yeah <laughs> yeah 72 hours exclusive of, exclusive of weekends and holidays so it okay essentially someone gets arrested on a friday get them for the judge on a monday then we know if they're going to be held or if they're going to be released if they're going to be held then it's immediately on the phone with other counties saying hey you got room for yeah. an inmate and then if you do okay now we try to find transportation and yeah so really it's that's fun yeah. any other questions we'll call the question then all those in favor signify by saying oh, 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 oh we didn't have a motion. <laughs> okay. trying to move things motion. i've got to get to it a uh, uh, little for it. we've got a motion by yeah, jason <coughs> second by Wayne. Yeah, okay, okay. Second. all right any further discussion Call a question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, motion carries. All right. All right. I'll just grab your signature. Well, well, thank well, you. Welcome. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I think you've taken care of you've taken care of the burial. Mm -hmm. yep. And so then, um, the warrant that you approved was that mine or was that a different one? That was a different one. Okay. So, so that we just have. So I just have the warrant, um, or two warrants, I guess, for you to approve. Or voids, right? Voids, yes. Sorry. I'll move on those. Okay, we've got a motion by Kevin. Second. Second by Jason. Any questions or discussion on that? All right, we'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. That's it? That's it. Easy for I think me. Out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it went fine. So, okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. On to what, land and forest business? Pat here? Jason was here, but he went down, he went back to the office at home. I wonder if he knew he was on. I'm sure he does. Well, I guess it's just approve the dates and I'll, be, I'll, I'll make a motion we approve the dates for the next option. Unless you want Jason back in. What date? Nathan. Nathan. Or Nathan, I see. Yeah, Jason usually. Jason. Nathan. You, he usually gives us a review of it. Timber options. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll second Wayne's motion. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call a question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Highway business. Hello. Now you we got, got me more. now. <laughs> At least somebody sticks around for it. Uh, the first requested board item is. Uh, to award project ASAP 036-674-007 to KGM contractors $480,831.55. Um, basically, we received the authorization to bid this project on July 12th. 
uh, project is located uh, down on Cassad 74, right by Silverdale. It's the only paved road we had in Silverdale. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, this year, with the work that's going on there, uh, we had to replace the paving over the culvert we replaced a couple years ago. So we went ahead and just decided to get that one mile done down there. Uh, <laughs> bid opening was uh, August 17th. Uh, a total of two contractors. We only received two bids. Uh, the engineer's estimate was $264,893. We'd like to award the contract for the best value to the county, to KGM, with a total bid of $180,831.55, which was significantly below the engineer's estimate. So we got good bids. We'll We'll go pave down there and we won't have to go paving for probably another 20, 30 years. Have any of you board members been to Silverdale? Mm -hmm. You have, yeah. yeah. I've been. There's nothing like it. Uh, Doug Grendel, when he was a highway engineer, he would, when he went down there, he always wore a, fl a flak jacket. <laughs> I don't. Everybody, yeah, I know. That, I mean, that was back in the old days. Everybody down there carried guns, you know, so quite the crew. I had a lot of fun with those. Anyway, so wishes of work. I'll move on this. We've got a motion. Commissioner Scoy. So I said, good, Kevin. Oh, I'll second. Uh, second by Commissioner Aidey then. Uh, any questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution for economic development. Yeah, this, uh, this, we'd like to get a resolution. Uh, I've got a TED application put together, and one, one of the things we need, and TED stands for Transportation Economic Development. And I've got this application for a roundabout on Highway 53. We received a $1.8 million grant from uh, uh, the Minnesota Freight Program. And if we get some more money for it, that will lessen how much the county would have to chip in on this project. Um, this is a, this resolution is for a TED grant in the years 2022 to 2024. That works pretty good for us. The <coughs> roundabout would be planned for 2024. Uh, right now we have uh, just about completed the 30% design and we got approval for the layout of the roundabout from uh, MnDOT because it's on their roadway. Do we need property acquisition? We need a little bit, not much. If you look at the footprint of that, you know, between 332 and 53, we have most of it. Okay. So we have to get a little bit, primarily, in, and we've talked to the landowners, primarily it's gonna be in the North, east, no, northwest corner. Okay. You know, where, uh, yeah. yeah. It, it, he's got some buildings or stuff there. Yeah, but we're not going to impact them. We've already talked to him okay. about it, and uh, okay. I don't think it will be a problem. Okay, good. Uh, this is a resolution to the terms and conditions associated with the TED application for the roundabout. At Highway 53 and Casad 332 in 2021, the county was awarded $1.8 million in funding from the 2020 freight grant program for a construction of a round, roundabout at this intersection in 2024. The current estimate on the project is $3,035,825. And I, I changed the RBA from what was originally sent out because I just got the us estimates after the 30% and the co cost estimates went down a little bit. So what what we're asking for from the TED grant is slightly different. The TED grant application we're requesting is would be for 1.1 million and the remaining portion of the project would be funded by the county state aid. And if you look at, you know, you can add them up pretty quickly. Uh, 1.1 plus 1.8 is the county Cassad program wouldn't have to pay for much if we are fortunate enough to get this grant. Yeah. So I've been trying to get some more money for this project. Uh, so I have a resolution here, and 
I would like to get uh, some signatures on it. Should I read the resolution or you all got a copy of it? Any, anybody want to hear? We, we it. Okay, so if I get that. Okay, the last item I got. Oh, you guys got a, I need a motion on it. I'll move on that. Topic. Got a motion by Wade. Certain second. Second by Jason. Any discussion? I survived uh, Silverdale because I brought Carol down there and they, lo they loved Carol. <laughs> she was the safety mechanism. We'll call the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, I think uh, Betsy sent out a, a, a little overview. What I wanted to do is, you know, there was a lot of, you know, uh, tough decisions when it came to the local option sales tax. And I, I feel that it's up to me to give you an update what we've seen so far. So this is a, just a quick and dirty update. Um, basically, on April 1st of this year, the local option sales tax for roadway projects in Cuchichin County went into effect. The tax is 0.5% and was approved by the board in 2021. It was expected that the lost local option sales tax would generate approximately $550,000 a year. We have been receiving monthly updates from the Minnesota Department of Revenue. Uh, the next page is an update of that. If you look at it, it says Minnesota DOR Report 8922. Uh, so far, uh, Minnesota Department of Revenue takes out a, a portion of this to handle their costs. Uh, but so far, in the first three months, and we probably have another statement coming, we've generated almost 190000 So we're averaging closer to 600000 uh, in in terms of a year or better. So... That's very good news for for us. Um, one, one of the other things I'd like, uh, so we're going to generate probably a little excess of 600k a year. Uh, we've got our project list that we developed when we approved the lo local option sales tax. With the flooding this year and the potential FEMA money coming in, we would like to provide prioritize some of the projects and how many projects we do say next year will be dependent on how much money we get from people. But this is an opportunity to take projects that might have just been, because these projects were on the list, with County Road 133, 134, we were just going to do an overlay and now maybe it's time to get them up. I mean, and raised and Re we would reconstruct them. Reconstruct them, get them above the 2022 flood so we don't have to do what we did this last year. Yeah, and so we're focusing on that. And you know, the, the projects that we will probably prioritize, and we'll come to you again, you know, before we go and advertise and, and do complete the design. In 2023, I think it would be County Road 134, I call it a lift and repair. That project was already slated to be done because of the cattail removal project. So we've got all these things coming together. And we'll be working with soil and water because before we, we envisioned putting in, I think, five or six culverts to increase water flow. Uh, we think a better project would be to lift the road up, put a box culvert underneath there, and really get a good water flow, and, and maybe small boat traffic through there. So, and everybody that we've talked to so far, uh, Laney, Rainy Low Lakes property, so property owners, uh, other people, they really like that idea, and we'll be working on Carol that. Carol and I use the, the box culvert on the northern railroad there. Yep. Because that's the shortest way to our cabin. Yeah, it, and it, it, works, it, it works good. Yeah, for little boats. Yep. And when I was a kid, I used to love going through box culverts <laughs> with a little outboard. So it, it'll keep the cattails 
in a way yep. with that extra flow in there. So those, you know, so next year, you know, depends on how much FEMA funding we've got, but we'd probably like to go ahead with 134 and 135 if we we have that much money, uh, okay. and we've got to design it in 2024. I think we this FEMA money, if we get it, will have a sunset date on it. So. And it's almost like a, a match money. I mean, we're going to have to, and, and we can use our local option sales tax to do that. So in 2024, it might be County Road 133, uh, 117, and maybe part portions of 446. Uh, 117 is the Birch Point Road. We just got that opened yesterday. Uh, we had lifted that road and we needed to get the material off before we opened it back up to the public. People have been using it, but we haven't opened it to the public really. And then we'd be off to maybe County Road 76 in 2025. But you know, we've got, we've got this list of over 20 projects and to spend our local option sales tax on. We need to prioritize it. I need your input on how that prior to priority goes, um, or Trent will, I should say. <laughs> but that's just a quick summary. Um, and I thought it was time. I mean, we've got almost the first quarter of revenue. And it looks like in the first quarter, by the time they get the last part of it, it will be about 200,000. Uh, there are some startup costs that are gonna come up out of that from the Department of Revenue. But after that, the portion that they take is very small. And, you know, I think it amounts to, I can't remember what it was on the sheet, but it amounts to about $1,000. We're looking at bee weeding in that Northern Air area where the cattails were so and, and we've got pictures and back in the in ni early in the 1950s there was no weed in there at all and then we built the we built the roads to the islands the county did and put in those little round culverts well everything choked and now it's all solid solid weeds so so getting those box culverts you know if we're getting we're going to go through the the whole deal of getting rid of the weeds it won't last unless we get some flow. So you know, we, we were really hesitant to lift the roads. I mean, because all of a sudden a whole slew of permits you have to get. I mean, you're, you're putting yeah. stuff in the waters of the state. And I mean, if you lift it up one foot, it goes out two feet on each side. Yeah. I mean, so, I and, and we're talking about lifting a lot of these roads. Three feet, so it's six feet on each side. But with maybe potential FEMA flood mitigation money with our local option sales tax. I, I think it makes good sense. I mean, and we're, we're going to try to do that. Well, let me tell you about the flood. Carol and I are living in a, a little log cabin, 14 by 16, with 150 pound St. Bernard, two cats that wandered in over the years, and me and Carol in this little tiny. Really <laughs> bonding, I bet. Hey, but is there a nice view of the water? We're right on the lake then, you know. But, oh, what a headache. Yeah, Carol's so, been a good sport. So. That's, that's what I had for an update, and I, I would assume we'll probably update with you guys on this local option sales tax. This, this, is, this is funding that we can only spend on projects. We can't do anything else. And our goal is to spend it on projects that are outside the state aid stuff and to help you know, minimize the impact on the local levy. You know, we can. We used to try to fund a local project to about two hundred thousand dollars a year from the local levy. Now we're thinking we don't have to do that, and we'll have more like six hundred thousand. I haven't heard a lot of negatives in the community about this half a percent. Uh, and you know, when we do these projects, we'll have some signage up that says, "Hey, this is because of the local option sales tax." And well, they can blame President Biden instead of you. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be gone. But I, I think, you know, our, our focus wasn't so much up by the lake, but now with this flood, I think we, we need to look at it and say, does this make sense? Mr. Haiti. So 
I think I think what I heard you say was really right right now because of the local option sales tax we don't have to rely on uh, the levy as much as much okay um, but then again I mean this can't directly replace levy dollars it has right. to be for project specifics that the board agreed on so it, it's it's reserved money and, right. and but you know any road that we fix up will cost us less in maintenance to maintain so nothing to approve there just just the update and um, thank you the only other thing I said you know I uh, would like to say is sheriff talked about the new jail uh, will be somewhat driven by what his plans are with the highway administration building but I believe we're in pretty good shape with finding a new location for that building we haven't done any design but maybe that's this winter sometime so when the sheriff gives me the boot there will there'll be a, a place for the new highway administration well that's I mean, we're looking at a lot of things. One of the things may be we're going to have a lot of empty space on that end where the sheriff's office is now. And, if, you know, can we afford to do two huge projects that's going to be tough on the taxpayers? So temporarily, that, that building's going to come down for sure. Yep. It's, it, what we're looking at is possibly keeping the garage stalls, those two garages, but that's not for sure either. That actually, we're thinking of the highway yeah. department there. but. Getting back to space, possibly where you know we've got all those offices where the sheriff group is now. They're going to be over here, and this is a, none of this for sure. These are the, the they've given us options, and it looks like the best option is we're we're going to add on over here. We're going to and move the uh, the veterans thing. To, we're going to put it out front here, in front of the courthouse or in front of the new building because we have to have that direct access to the courtroom with the prisoners. That's the deal. So That makes sense. Yeah. And, and to, you know, when it comes to our building out there, you know, what we're talking right now is, is just the admin portion. Right. Um, and, you know, county dollars that would have to go to it are about 50% because we'll get some state aid state money. State aid money, yeah. So, uh, but, <coughs> long term that's where I think it should go I mean there's there's concerns with the existing shop being a little too small there's concerns with uh, I think uh, the impound lot the sheriff has um, uh, and, and we should just make the plan so we can make the right decisions well, a lot to be seen yet too with what happens there. I mean, you know, we're, we're seeing figures like twenty million dollars. I mean, I'm sure a, you are. It's a little. I mean, it's hard to even fathom, that, you know, what that yeah. would do to our tax base. But anyway, we'll we'll keep you posted too. I mean, yeah, you're, you're, part, mean, you're, you're you, part of this. I, so. I don't want to hear that I have to get out of there in, in a month. Oh no. Well, you won't be telling me, so I, I don't have to worry. Looks looks good out there though. What? Great job. Looks good out there on that site. Yeah, with the we're, and the you know, gravel and stuff in there and the gates. Yeah, looks great. it it already looks a lot nicer. Really and good, um, yeah. the the one thing we still have to do is we got to get the paper either, and we're hopefully going to do that in September. Um, There's small trailers there you can throw them in. What? There's small trailers out there you can throw it in. <laughs> no, we think we'll end up filling up side dumps and hauling it to Kizuko. But that, that's. We're looking at September to do that. Let it dry up a little bit so we can yeah. clean up that stuff. Definitely a wet year, that's for sure. Well, it's wet, and we we did we did purchase some low property there too. Part of it, I mean. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Where, where are we at? We did your stuff. Oh, you did it already? Yeah, we, we, set the, we set the dates. We didn't have an, an update, but... Did you want to add anything, Nathan? Uh, so the, the, the dates, you approved them already, but they're basically the same as what we've had the past year, so there's no, no big issue there. And then 
the timber auction update is just the informational thing, so you can see the results in the packet there. So. You're a good man sitting next to that guy. Most people won't go near him. <laughs> Did you have anything for us, Matt? Uh, I, you know, it, there was no flood update, but I just wanted to let the board know that, you know, we're continuing with picking up sandbags and debris, and uh, we're probably over 50% on picking up uh, the sandbags uh, for those residents that have signed up for the program. Uh, Did we, we sign up for yeah, we were the first one, but we still have our time. Yeah, yeah, we, you're on our list, I, I, and uh, we will. No, get, there's no. We're doing fine. So whatever they get there is sure good with us. And they have pre, and most people have been that that way. Uh, there's been some uh, uh, challenges with some locations. Uh, you know, we have about a dozen contractors uh, uh, helping us with with uh, sandbag removal, and I've been just focusing on sandbag debris will come later. I, the sandbags, we have to actually go onto the properties and pick them up, and, and whereas the debris will be brought out to the right-of-ways. And so I've been holding off on the debris just because we only have 12 contractors and we have, uh, there was over 130 people that have signed up uh, for removal. And, and, you know, so there's a lot out there, but we're making progress. We're over 50% and uh, we are getting invoices from uh, the contractors uh, that we have to pay. And based on the, the guidance just, that we received from the just for years. just for the public's understanding how many how many bags were actually used like eight hundred thousand yeah so uh, I believe the sheriff had said they had uh, produced like a million sandbags uh, and I know there's probably a hundred thousand that were at Cary Park so I, I assume nine hundred thousand sandbags it's, were I mean it's, it's hard to even it's hard to even comprehend that that much yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, we've been uh, uh, progressing in uh, picking that up, and uh, we'll continue to do so. And uh, obviously, we'll pay the contractors, uh, you know, that are helping us as they submit invoices. And uh, but we'll continue the progress. And there was no flood update, so I thought, well, I'll just set the end of the meeting, give you a little bit. <laughs> I'm glad you, glad you guys didn't come in. All right. Anything else? And then the only other thing I was going to mention is uh, I know that uh, earlier you had taken care of uh, uh, Steve Blair's uh, retiring, and uh, so we'll have to fill that position. And I know you guys were ahead of schedule, so I wanted to be here for that, but uh, I apologize for that. So. <laughs> I gave gave a little. Steve, he was fun. Yeah. Okay. Well. Where are we at? Anyone here for public comment? Yes, Mr. Krauss. Sit, grab a chair. Thanks. <clears throat> I'm Joe Krauss. I'm the director of the Northland Mobile Mental Health Crisis Response Team. So we are responsible for providing mobile mental health crisis response services to everyone <coughs> in Kuchichin County. Your, um, your board is the, is the only one I think I'm going to hang in a... <laughs> the Northland <laughs> Counseling Board? I, I, I always tell the story I was ashamed because no one wanted the mental health board and I went and when I went there and saw what was going on, I realized well how important it is. And yeah, and so that's, I really enjoyed that board. So I won't, uh, you, you all have this, I won't read it necessarily, but just a little background. Um, in 2015, the, the Minnesota legislature set aside funding and uh, made it uh, statutory that each county in Minnesota have a 24-7, 365 mobile mental health crisis response team. Uh, when I say that, I mean 24-7, we're mobile, face-to-face, -face, uh, pandemic notwithstanding, because there were some rule changes there. But um, And we respond every on every square inch of Kuchichin County. So we're in the hospitals, the jails, the schools, people's homes, public locations. We're, we are everywhere. The only requirement to receive our services is we are voluntary for the most part so you have to agree to meet with one of us and you have to be in the county so residency age it doesn't it doesn't mean anything um, anybody under the age of 18 we would need parental consent in most circumstances but we can get around that sometimes depending upon their location um, so with that we belong to the um, 
Arrowhead Behavioral Health Initiative Region 3, or Kuchiching County does, uh, which includes Carleton, Cook, Itasca, Lake, and St. Louis counties. So that basically the Arrowhead. Uh, the Arrowhead receives a grant uh, yearly allocation of right around 1.7 to 1.8 million dollars. Uh, within that, we are allocated $270 thousand nine hundred and fifteen dollars to provide this service uh, which basically pays for everything we can bill ma um, our actual budget for this current year is three hundred and seven thousand nine hundred and fifteen dollars so we're looking at uh, about thirty seven thousand dollars in ma billing that we can we can bill for our service but our service is absolutely free um, our numbers um, crt by the numbers at the bottom there that's our 2021 call numbers so you can see um, that we in these so the the left column there the hot is and I, I should have updated this this is our terminology but hot means face-to-face -face. so we did 62 face-to-face -face assessments for adults in the county um, we assess 17 children face-to-face -face. then our warm is that's over the phone so we did 61 uh, uh, adults and we serve five children children you really don't serve over the phone that's more face-to-face -face or you're you're dealing with parents um, triage calls, these are calls that came into our line but didn't warrant a face-to-face -face visit. That could be they were um, intoxicated or it could be like a, a domestic. So we transferred that to another agency, whether it be the National Suicide Prevention Line or we work with Friends Against Abuse if it's domestic, um, that kind of stuff. So those we had 46 calls that came in. To, and I should note that we are dispatched out of first call for help in Grand Rapids. Um, all six counties in the Arrowhead are now dispatched out of the same facility and we have the same 1-800 number. Uh, previously, we were dispatched through 211. That is now switching, and you can still call 211 to get us, but it's, not, it's now switching over to 988. Um, actually, on about the 15th of September, somewhere in there, uh, don't quote me on the date, there will be some new marketing material that'll do that but all of the count all of the teams in the arrowhead are now dispatched out of the same office with the same qualifications and same requirements so and uh, yeah and, and I should note that st. Louis County has two teams since it's such a large county they're split in half they have the northern team and the southern team but then um, Itasca County has first call for help and then of course we cover here and then HDC has a contract to do Carleton Lake and Cook counties so um, with this, our grant is a buy -in. it's a two-year grant. We are in the middle of our grant application right now. Our grant application is due on September 2nd. As a requirement of that grant application, um, I am obligated to come to the county board and ask for a uh, money. Uh, as you can see, our, our budget is $307,000 and change a year. Um, I'm asking for $5,000 per year. Every, um, there's 87 counties in Minnesota, 86 counties contribute to this. Um, and it's, it's, the county is statutorily obligated to have this service. Luckily, the, the grant through DHS covers the lion's share of the cost. Um, so, but as a show of good faith, they, they ask that the counties contribute something. The smallest amount in the Arrowhead that's contributed right now is $5,000, so that's what I'm going to ask for. Um, Itasca and uh, St. Louis are a little bit higher, but uh, I must note that the Itasca County team has been in operation since 1994, so they are way ahead of the curve. We actually so, had, we had, the, we had the board up here, didn't we, uh, last month? It came up and we were out at the... Uh, Linda and Denny, Denny from the radio station. Mm -hmm. He's got the place up the lake, and uh, we had we entertained him up there, had had dinner and stuff, and a meeting, of course. But good, good group. So yeah, I I would just be asking for a, a county contribution to the to the program of five thousand dollars in fiscal year twenty three, and five thousand dollars in fiscal year twenty four. That is the uh, again, that's the smallest contribution in the arrowhead so we would match so you're looking at starting what next year right starting, starting in 23 yeah, yeah. 5023 5024 we obviously aren't going to change anything we're still going to continue to provide the services but the state does ask that we come to the county board that this is actually a new requirement it used to be um, 
was it, it wasn't necessarily required, so that's why I, I've been on since 2016. That's why I haven't been here. But no, they are requiring us to come and ask. So, uh, but, but if you look at it, you know, five thousand dollars in a over three hundred thousand dollar budget, it's a it's a pretty small contribution for what we do. Well, anyway, the, uh, the way we go about this is we put it in our budget request. And okay. And I, and I can absolutely come to another meeting. Sure. Um, the only thing is, again, my uh, the application came out actually the day after your last county board meeting. So this is the only county board meeting that you would have between now and when my application is due to the state. My application is due on September 2nd. Oh, oh so it's not, so it has to be done this month, this coming month? I would have to put it in my application. If it's if that it's there or not, to. I had, yeah that I have to I have to on September second I have to submit my application to DHS, and so in our budget um, allocations the first one is is county money, and then federal money, and then the state money which is the grant I'm asking for. So I would have to put it in there if it's um, if it's an option. So you need the board's decision within that month. Is that what I? I would. So. Yes. Yeah, they didn't give us, they, they never give us a lot of time. Um, and I didn't realize that it was going to be a requirement this year, and I apologize for that. If I would have known, I could have been here a long time ago and then just wait for the application. So, for example, in 2024, about this time of year, we will receive the application for 25 and 26. I will be sure, or whomever will be sure, to be here much earlier for the ask. Okay, so you can, you know, I guess we could put it on the, put the request on the next for the next meeting? I think it'll be too late. No, too late. Will it be too late but to amend? Yes. The, the truth of the matter is, is I can always amend the application if I have to. So yeah, if, if you can't make the decision now, I can certainly amend the application or just make note that the ask was there, but the budget and finance meeting just didn't line up with the amount of time because they, they gave us a very short window to get this done. Like I had said, the, the application actually came out with all of the requirements the Wednesday after your last, so whatever that was, August, I don't even know. So ninth. they don't, ninth, yeah. And I think we, we talked shortly thereafter, so they didn't give us a whole lot of time. Um, and it's a, it's always a moving target with, with DHS, you never know. I'm sure Kathy can attest to that, that you never you never know what you're gonna get. So, so I just wanted to present it. And uh, again, if I have to amend the application, I can certainly do that. That's it, wishes of the board. Sounds good if you want to put it up next. That's okay if you can amend it because it's not too much trouble. And just yep. certainly yep. a good cause, a yep. good, good, uh, good yeah. have. Yeah, Thank you. And that we, I mean, we really can't do it today. Right, right. And it's a, uh, um, like I said, it, it's, a, it's a small amount, but it's, a, it's, more a good, it's more of a good faith investment than anything. The state recognizes that they're going to fund the lion's share of this program. Uh, but each every all so the, I will I will say this the other eighty six counties all contribute, so it's just a it's a good faith that we don't we don't always fall. Are we the only one that doesn't? <laughs> yes. So well, it, it it is what it is. Um, it's just a um, it, it's really more it's more of a good faith than than anything because it is it is such a, a small ask, um, and I certainly wouldn't ask for more. So. Thank you for your time. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Any other business come before this board? All right, hearing none. Motion to adjourn would be in order. I'll move. All right, we've got a motion. I'll second. And a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.